Hello and welcome back. This is chapter 3, video 3, in which we will cover truth trees. Now in the previous two videos, we talked about truth tables, which is a method for listing every possible truth value assignment for a formula or set of formulas, and then checking all truth value assignments to see what happens. The truth tree method allows us to search for specific truth value assignments to determine the properties of individual formulas, pairs of formulas, sets of formulas, and arguments. The main method is to search for a truth value assignment which makes a set consistent. That is, a truth value assignment which makes all members of a set true. Since we can define all the other properties we're interested in in terms of consistency of sets, this will allow us to test for all the properties we're interested in. First, a simple illustration. Consider this set containing just two formulas. Is it consistent? Some of you might be able to tell the answer just by looking at it, but we'll use this simple case to demonstrate the basic method. In order to test whether it's consistent or not, we try to find a truth value assignment that makes all its members true. And to do that, we list the members of the set vertically, like that, and then we consider each formula we have in the list and write down what is required for that formula to be true. In essence, what we're going to do is decompose each sentence into sentence letters or negated sentence letters, depending on whether that sentence letter should take the value true or the value false. Now when we want to talk about single statement letters or the direct negation of single statement letters, we call them literals. In essence, we're going to be decomposing formulas into literals. Literals will be the ends of the branches of our trees, or in essence, the leaves on the tree. If we have a negated literal, then we're being told that that sentence should be taken to be false on that branch of that tree. And if we have a non-negated literal, that is to say, just a single sentence letter, then we're being told that that statement should be taken to be true on that branch of that tree. This will make a little more sense when we see some examples. So let's decompose the first of those two sentences there, C and D. Now obviously for that statement to be true, both C must be true and D must be true. So what we'll do is draw a little connecting line here, and we'll list the two components of the very first statement that need to be true for it to be true. And then we can check that statement off since we're done with it. Now, if you look at the second statement there, that is a negated disjunction. What must be true for not either D or G to be true? Well, we'll continue our tree down, and we know that we have to have not D true, that is D false, and not G true, that is G false. And we can check that statement off. Now if we examine what we've got here, we've got two slightly complex sentences, each of which has been checked off, and all that remains on a single branch of our tree are literals, either statement letters or directly negated statement letters, there's no way we can further decompose this tree. So we're done constructing the tree. Now we need to examine it. What we have in this area of the tree here is a list of literals, basic components that have to be true in order for the two original statements to be true. Now what you may notice is that we have both D and not D in that list. In fact, this is not possible because it's a contradiction. What this shows is that in order to make both these statements true, we would have to assign contradictory truth values to D. So this set is not consistent. In fact, what we're going to do is put a big X under this branch so that makes it a closed branch. Since that's the only branch of the tree, 
It's a closed tree. That means that the original set is truth functionally inconsistent. So again, what we've done is we've systematically searched for truth value assignment that would make both of the members of the set true. And in doing so, we we're forced into a contradiction. Therefore, there is no truth value assignment that can make both members of that set true. So the set is inconsistent. Let's look at another example before we look at the rules that are applied here. Take this set for example. Just three statements, keeping it simple. Let's check to see if there's a truth value assignment which would make every member of this set true. So we'll list the members of the set vertically as before. The order doesn't really matter. There we go. And at this point, it doesn't really matter in which order we decompose them. As you'll see as we go along, there are strategies to make the trees as efficient as possible, but we won't worry about that right now. We'll just take them from top to bottom. So look at n arrow not m. What has to be true for that to be true? If you remember from your characteristic truth tables, a conditional is true when either the antecedent is false or the consequent is true. That means, since we have an either or, that our tree is going to branch. We either need the antecedent false, not n true, or the consequent true. Since the consequent is not m, we'll get that there. We can check off the very first formula. The next sentence is not not n. What statement needs to be true for not not n to be true? Well, obviously that decomposes just to n with no negations. And we need to add that to both branches of the tree. Since we've got two branches going now, we need to decompose any sentence above onto every still open lower branch. Now our remaining sentence is M or J. Obviously we need an M to be true or a J to be true. So we're going to branch again. In fact, each branch has to branch. and we can check that statement off. So now we've got something that actually looks a little bit more like a tree. And the way we read the branches is we've actually got four attempts to make all three of those claims in the set true. Here's one attempt. Here would be another attempt. There is a third. And there's the fourth. Now if we examine these carefully, you will notice that on the left-hand side, in both cases, we've got an n and a not n. So we're going to put an x at the bottom of this branch, since that branch contains a contradiction, and an x at the bottom of that branch, since it contains a contradiction. But if we look over the two branches on the right-hand side, what do we find? Well, we've got a contradiction in M and not M there. So we got an X at the bottom of that branch. But if you look at the rightmost branch, it tells us that if we make J true, N true, and M false, we get true statements for all three members of the set. So while we do have three closed branches, the ones on which we place the X, we have one open branch. And this means that the set is truth functionally consistent. In fact, when we have J true N true and m false, we get all three statements of the set coming up as true. As I'm sure you've guessed, 
we have a set of rules for doing this decomposition process. If you look over on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see all nine of the rules. We have two rules for each of the binary connectives. For example, if you look at conjunction, we have a rule for decomposing a conjunction. For a conjunction to be true, each conjunct must be true. And we have another rule for decomposing a negated conjunction. In that case, since either one or both of the internal conjuncts must be true, it decomposes into each conjunct negated. And we have similar rules for the other three connectives. We've got disjunction decomposition, negated disjunction decomposition, arrow decomposition, and negated arrow decomposition. And then of course biconditional decomposition and negated biconditional decomposition. Now you notice for negation we've just got a double negation decomposition. We don't need negation decomposition, simple single negation decomposition, because we stop decomposition when we arrive either at a statement letter or a negated statement letter. So there's no need to have negation decomposition. So nine rules. We'll look at some examples of how they work. Okay, consider this set of three statements. Is it consistent or not? Well, we can easily do the test. We will list them vertically. Not A, if and only if. B, not, not A, and C, and then not A, then C. So this will bring uh, some of the rules we haven't seen yet into play. Uh, and one general strategy is you should try to decompose statements that do not branch prior to decomposing statements that do branch. So which of these don't branch? Well, a negated conditional doesn't branch, so we might want to decompose that one first. That is the third sentence, not A then C. Now to decompose that, we need to apply this rule here, and it tells us that a negated conditional decomposes into the antecedent and the negation of the consequent. So that would give us A and not C, and we can check that one off. There's no further decomposition to do on A and not C there, so we're all right. We'll see in some of the more complicated examples that you'll have multiple levels of decomposition to do. Now, both the other two are going to branch. It doesn't really matter which one we pick first. Let's look at uh, the biconditional, not A and B. Now, the biconditional as a whole is not negated. It's not this pattern here. It's this pattern here. It just so happens that the P, our A, happens to have a negation. So what we'll do is we'll just break that up into the two possibilities. Either both those components, the not A, and the B are both true, or they're both false. Not, not A and not B. So we can check that guy off. Now notice we have a not, not A right there. We might as well go ahead and decompose that. It only appears on that branch right now. So we'll list that as A and we can check that off. Now we still have one sentence yet to be decomposed. It's the second of the original sentences. It's a negated conjunction. And we know that splits into each side of the internal conjunction negated. So we're going to have a branch on each of these branches. We'll have not, not A, and then not C. And down here we'll also have not, not A, and not C. That is the result of applying negated conjunction decomposition to this statement here. Now we can check that statement off. We still have two more statements to decompose. We've got not, not A right here. We can 
check that off and put in an A. And we've got it again here, so we'll check it off and put in an A. Now, if we examine these branches, do any of them close? Well, if you look at the leftmost branch, right, we've got an A here and a not A here. So that branch closes. Contradiction. If you look at the next one to the right, what do we have? It looks like we've got not C, we've got B, we've got not A, uh, we've got an A here. So that one is going to close as well because of the A and not A. Now if we look at the remaining two branches, we've got A, A, not B, not C, A. Note that we don't really pay attention to these bits here because those are sentences that had further decomposition done to them. We're looking here, 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 and here, and there are no contradictions, so that branch remains open. And then on the final branch, we've got a not C, A, not B, not C, and A again. So that branch also remains open. So we have two open branches, which means the tree as a whole is open. So there is a way for this set to be consistent. So those are some basic examples of how to use truth trees to test sets of formulas for consistency. Now remember, if a branch of the tree contains a contradiction, then we mark that branch with an X and it is called a closed branch. If a branch of the tree does not contain any contradictions, then we don't mark it and the branch is called an open branch. If every branch of a tree is closed, if it has no open branches, then the tree itself is called closed. This indicates that there is no truth value assignment making every member of the set true, so the set is inconsistent. If a tree has at least one open branch, then the tree as a whole is said to be open. And that open branch, or any open branches if there are more than one, give us truth value assignments which make every member of the set true, so the set is consistent. In the next video, we'll look at how to use that consistency test in order to test for other truth functional properties of formulas, sets of formulas, and arguments.